everyone. My name is Mary Ellen Young, and I am the chapter advisor for the Zeta Sigma chapter at Texarkana College. And on behalf of Alpha Omicron, Tyler Junior College, and Zeta Sigma Texarkana College, we want to welcome you to PTK 101. Joining me with my, from my chapter today is Maya Brown, who will be a part of the presentation today. And then also we have Gigi Delk, advisor for Alpha Omicron, who will introduce her members. All right, folks, we have our brand new elected chapter president, Deshauna Jernigan, Deshauna Wave. And we also are thrilled to have our District 3 Texas Vice President, Amy Joffreon, in the mix. And then I've got a few other officers that are checking in. So we're, we've got a, a good group here today, and we certainly are excited to see all these folks are going to be looking at Phi Theta Kappa 101 with us. All right. So what we're going to do is we're really giving you an overview of just a vast amount of information that uh, Phi Theta Kappa has to offer. And then um, Gigi will be sharing a document that we'll have as well. And you'll have access to that um, once it's posted on YouTube. So we really want this to be an overview. Um, and it's a lot of information. So don't, don't let it scare you. Um, little by little, we just take it one piece at a time. So anyway, so first we kind of look at Phi Theta Kappa and we're like, well, what is PTK? And um, Phi Theta Kappa has been recognized as and designated as the official honor society of community colleges by the As American Association of Community Colleges. It's been in existence for over 100 years and it has helped millions of high achieving students uh, reach their full potential through scholarships and um, leadership opportunities and um, just to help them grow as leaders and be engaged on their campuses and also in their communities. Phi Theta Kappa students are here to make a difference and that's exactly what they do. Um, the Phi Theta Kappa headquarters is located in Jackson, Mississippi. There are 3.5 million uh, members in the United States and also in 10 sovereign nations. There are over, over $46 million every year are exclusively given in scholarships for Phi Theta Kappa. And there are 800 university partners that are thrilled to receive Phi Theta Kappa students once they um, com complete the uh, community college or transfer to their colleges and universities. So they are always so excited to see the, these wonderful leaders and offer those opportunities. Phi Theta Kappa also awards over $1.5 million in scholarships for Phi Theta Kappa students every year. And that's the Phi Theta Kappa Foundation. So they offer $1.5 million in scholarships. So we'll look at those opportunities too. So Phi Theta Kappa really is, it's a transformational, um, experience for all of our students and it provides so many opportunities. Um, in Texas, in our Texas region, we actually have 92 chapters. And uh, just kinda, your screen is not showing all the way. Oh, Can really? you adjust your chat window or maybe shut that down? It's We're not seeing the far left okay. part of the screen. Right now it says hat is PTK. Okay, so I don't, um, hmm, I hate that. Let me see. Folks in the chat window that, that alerted us to something going on. Okay, I closed the, my chat window. Let's see, sorry, you guys. Let me see what I need to do about that. Anybody chime in, please. What is it? Oh, are you seeing three people? Or what are you seeing now? Me, I see the whole screen. Buddy, what are we seeing? There we go. Okay, and it's okay now? That good thumbs up? Thank yes. you. All right, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. so sorry for that. So, um, and then just some demographics. 68% um, of members are females. The average age is 28. And um, the average GPA is a 3.6. And what's fascinating is for Phi Theta Kappa students, um, in the United States who complete an associate degree or transfer to a four-year college, 91% of Phi Theta Kappa members um, transfer or complete their associate degree. And that is compared to only 38 in the United States who are not in Phi Theta Kappa. 
So a uh, huge difference and it really is, it grows scholars and community leaders as we said. And so next, we'll look at the four different hallmarks that Phi Theta Kappa has to offer. And Maya Brown will cover that. Okay, so our society's hallmarks, scholarship, fellowship, leadership, and service are important ideals of the organization. Scholarship, which is the most important of the four hallmarks, focuses on scholarly research that identifies community and natural, national causes, needs, and potential solutions. Some examples of scholarship include your research for honors in action, maintaining your grades, and even applying for different scholarships. The fellowship hallmark focuses on members supporting one another in the pursuit of scholarly excellence and developing interpersonal skills throughout the entire process. Fellowship examples are themed meetings, food at meetings, and events like movie nights with your chapter. The leadership hallmark involves building an effective research team and preparing leaders by developing leadership skills and filling leadership positions and roles. The leadership hallmark is shown through attending leadership uh, training and helping other people with their research and school. Last but certainly not least, the service hallmark involves members collaborating with community and campus partners to improve the community and campus through existing volunteer opportunities and the discovering of new needs that require further research to identify solutions. Examples of the service hallmark are volunteering, such as trash pickup and blood drives. Okay, and then moving on to chapter advisor and officer responsibilities. Um, some of the advisor responsibilities include just a, a general overseeing of chapter operations and then to submit the annual chapter annual report every year and then invite eligible members and report new members and then create chapter bylaws, update them or just check to make sure that Phi Theta Kappa has, headquarters has a copy of those and then uh, many times to plan and chaperone off campus trips. Also, the nice thing is for chapter advisors is that under the chapter resources, either under the advisor tab or the member tab, there is um, a list of chapter advisor responsibilities. So again, that's under chapter resources on the Phi Theta Kappa, the ptk.org page. Uh, the other thing that was implemented just a few years ago is the chapter advisor plan and it's a chapter advisor program. And it's where, um, uh, advisors are able to take uh, different learning modules and go through and there are videos and it is a comprehensive look at being an advisor but also just the overall workings of Phi Theta Kappa. There are videos, there are questions, um, there are PowerPoint slides and it is excellent. At the end of, uh, as soon as a chapter advisor completes the entire program, they actually receive a five-star plan and uh, a five-star uh, pin, and they actually become a five-star advisor. So definitely for new advisors, but even advisors that have been in for a while and have not um, gone through the five-star program, definitely want to do that. A wealth of information that will benefit your chapter is listed there. Also for chapter officers, so chapter officers you know, one of the things we really want to see is we want to see chapter officers help engage members and engage them in those four hallmarks, leadership, scholarship, fellowship, and service. But also, same thing with chapter officers um, under the chapter resources, so under member and chapter resources, then you will find a list of chapter officer responsibilities as well. And the nice thing about this information is they list each uh, officer position and that there's a list of duties under that. For example, president, uh, prepare meeting agendas and lead the meetings, appoint and establish necessary committees, uh, vote, vote only in the case of a tie, develop goals for the chapter with the help of officers and advisors, oversee chapter projects, oversee award entry preparation, and then provide regular updates to the chapter advisor. And so, and it continues, not only the information that's provided is there for you for chapter officer positions, so it includes, you know, vice president of scholarship, vice president of leadership, service, and fellowship, um, all of the, all four of those, 
and then a treasurer position, recording officer, and public relations. But it also provides information if you have a scholarship committee or leadership committee or any of those committees. So that is a great resource to follow and definitely want to encourage you to do that. And then in a, a little later in the slide presentation, we'll look at um, competitive edge, a competitive edge program, which is extremely comprehensive and you'll learn more about Phi Theta Kappa through that program and what it has to offer. And we definitely want to encourage all of you to get involved with that as well as chapter officers or members. Okay, and then at this time, chapter planning, and probably no one, almost no one knows chapter planning better than Gigi Delt from Tyler Junior College. So Gigi, it's all yours. All right. For those of you that are brand new, whether you're a brand new advisor or a brand new officer, this is the time of year where you're thinking, oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into and how can we possibly get these things accomplished? So I will tell you that one of the first things you need to do is you need to get a calendar. So one of the suggestions I made for this meeting is you need to have a calendar for your campus with all the campus activities, when the campus is going to be open and closed, you need to have a Phi Theta Kappa calendar, and you're going to try and figure out exactly what you're going to do one semester at a time. I think sometimes people get overwhelmed because they're trying to plan the entire year. We have a wonderful guide in Phi Theta Kappa called the Five Star Chapter uh, Program. So what I want to do is kind of make you think about what we're going to be doing first. So my first suggestion is to pick a meeting. If you are brand new or you have a chapter that's regenerating or you are uh, trying to get organized for the first time, figure out who your leaders are. And if you would figure out when they are available. And for the, in the starting phases, everybody that's on deck has got to be able to come to a meeting. So if you can all get together on a Monday night, that's great. If it's got to be a Tuesday or whatever we may need. Sorry, I'm seeing that my audio is cracking up. I'm trying to do this at school and sometimes my audio is not that great. I hope I will work through that. I may have to switch over to so that. that better, anybody? Am I breaking up still? Hopefully I'm okay. It's so the right idea now. is get a calendar. There you go. Figure out when you're going to meet. We meet, our chapter traditionally meets Mondays at 510. The reason that I say that is because you get that on the calendar. How many Mondays do you have between now and your Christmas break? And that's how many meetings you have to worry about. That's how many meetings you have to schedule. That makes it a little easier because there, now you have a limit. You have something you're working toward. You have this many meetings. Then you want to think about those, those hallmarks. Where can we incorporate scholarship, leadership, fellowship, and service into the meetings that we're doing from August to December? Have, uh, you'll definitely want to include your regional leadership conference, which is always in October. You'll want to look ahead and you have fingers crossed we're actually going to get to meet in person uh, for our regional convention for each state. Our regional convention in Texas generally occurs in March, right before spring break. That's not locked in, but you can kind of think of March as the time that happens. Our national convention. Again, double fingers crossed because we are getting to go, um, we'll be close to New York if it all works out, uh, but uh, that will be happening in April. Hope COVID gets itself under control so we can actually be in person. So you'll do your chapter kind of one semester at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Mary Ellen shift out of her share screen. I am going to jump into a screen. And I'm going to pull up, oh, are you guys seeing information about golden opportunity one side and one side, uh, one star on the other? Somebody yes. Tell me if we're there. All right. So on one side, if you are kind of taking a peek, it talks about honors in action and college project and something called five star. Now, Phi Theta Kappa works in part uh, scholarship is our focus. Scholarship is what gets you an invitation to Phi Theta Kappa. National level, they have some set requirements. Our personal chapter requirements are 3.5 GPA and 12 hours on our Tyler Transcript. 
The thing you need to realize is it's that GPA that gets you into Phi Theta Kappa. So you can't require people to do anything else as a requirement for membership. Membership is earned by your GPA. So chapters, as you're planning what you want to do for the year, you need to think about ways that you can make activities appealing and exciting and be sure that your membership knows why they would want to be involved in these activities. So if we go from our calendar back to our one-star schedule, what you'll see is that you have to recruit members. That could be a campaign on Facebook. That could be a campaign on Standing out with signs saying, join Phi Theta Kappa. Invite eligible students. Help them join informational meetings about the benefits. And again, it's your advisor's job to, to set up the annual report. If you don't have bylaws, Phi Theta Kappa headquarters can send you an example of bylaws, but most of you do have bylaws on file. So if you're a chapter that's kind of getting reinvigorated, uh, if you contact the national office, they'll probably have your bylaws and can send you a copy, which is pretty nice. Because I know sometimes if an advisor steps down or if everybody in the chapter graduates, the new officers and the new advisor are looking at this giant umbrella that is the wonder of Phi Theta Kappa and going, where on earth am I going to plug in? So most every chapter starts as one star. Kind of like you're breathing, you're hopefully digesting some lunch, all that's one star, that's happening all by itself. Now we need to move up to the two star level and that's trying to organize your chapter. And isn't that why we're all here today, is trying to organize our chapter, get a little bit more involved and engaged. So we're going to set a goal to achieve a chapter status. I encourage every chapter listening to this to set an achievement goal of five star. Phi Theta Kappa is not like one of those places that say, nope, you didn't get it. We don't get any rewards at all. If you say, we well, want to be a five star chapter and you work really hard and you do the very best your chapter can, for star chapter, that is an amazing accomplishment. And you'll be recognized for the effort that you put in. But I always say, aim high. Plan to be a five-star, let's see how far we can get. When you talk about membership recruitment, that should be some type of chapter leadership and try to tell people, hey, the invitations are out, join Phi Theta Kappa. So I'm gonna ask the folks that are tuning in today, if anybody wants to turn their microphone on, in one sentence, why did you join Phi Theta Kappa? My chapter doesn't know that. <laughs> Why'd you join? Anybody? Hello. I think my reason for joining Phi Theta Kappa was ha to have a better understanding about how can I portray leadership and community service through my educational career. So, Why did you join Phi Theta Kappa? So initially I joined because I was interested in the service events and then it became, oh, hey, these people are kind of like me. Good. Maya, why did we, why did we get you involved in Phi Theta Kappa up there in Texas? I joined for all the leadership opportunities that I had heard about from one of my friends that was in Phi Theta Kappa before me. Andy. So what I'm going to share here is that while signs and emails and messaging is great, the number one reason a lot of people join Phi Theta Kappa is somebody in their class, in the hallway, in their dorm said, hey, I'm going to a Phi Theta Kappa meeting. Never underestimate the power of reaching out to someone personally and say, come to this meeting. That's kind of one of the most important things you can do. There's basically four, you think, as a planning process, the reason you want to think about setting up your meetings is some people come because they want to be leaders. They have been a leader in high school. They see an opportunity to lead on their campus. That's an awesome, awesome opportunity. Second, scholarship. $3.5 million in scholarships earmarked for Phi Theta Kappa members are going to get people's attention. For all of you guys trying to go on to, to uh, bachelor's and master's degrees, that money is going to be important for you. So scholarships and the ability to earn scholarships is a big draw. Some people are new on campus and they really are a little overwhelmed and they would like to meet people, as Amy mentioned, we'd like to meet people like ourselves. We want to meet somebody new. So the fellowship aspect is key in terms of that. And of course, we always have community service. Everybody benefits from 
help somebody. So at every meeting, kind of mentally think, are we doing something to attract those people? And let's not forget, there's going to be people that show up at every meeting that just want to have the free people. Never did, you know, those folks could be, could be brought into the fold. So think of ways meetings can be fun. Always have someone to recognize folks as they come in the door, welcome them, shake their hand, make sure everyone that comes to your meeting is spoken to. Then you want to look at the, what, what you might be doing in your five-star goal. So if we have leadership positions, you know, are there leadership, so leadership training? This time of year, you should be saying, hey guys, we have a leadership conference coming up. It's virtual. Uh, we have 15 people that we can send to this conference. Every chapter in the state of Texas should be sending people to this conference. It's a great place to learn how to be a leader. It's a great place to interact with other Phi Theta Kappa Thinking about service, there should be some areas on your campus that you might be able to serve. And this gives us kind of a great lead into some of the the very big projects that I think Kappa is involved in. If you look on your screen on the left-hand side, it says, what is honors in action? Why should my chapter get it? Honors in action just says, you know, we're a bunch of smart people. We want to things to change the world. But if you just go out willy-nilly and try to do something without doing some research first, you may not be all the help that you can do. As an example, we have large areas of the country right now that have been affected by weather, hurricanes, and what have you. My husband's a FEMA inspector, and he talks about there will be, there will be semi-trucks full of bottled water stuck on the side of the road sometimes because everybody sends bottled water, and what the people in these areas really need is Way, cleaning supplies and gloves and additional masks and places that they can store their valuables as they find them. So research would help you be as beneficial as you can be with this project. So what are the, part of the honors in action idea is there's all sorts of themes and things that you can be involved in. There are different themes. So what I encourage you to do is if you do not have an honors in action program guide, uh, your advisor should have received a packet with several in it from headquarters, but you can always call the 1-800 number for headquarters, which is on the paperwork we'll receive when we finish this session, and just say, I'm a new advisor or I'm a new officer, and I would like to get a copy of the Honors Program Guide, and they'll send you out. College Project is another service opportunity that's more direct to our campus. What it says is that you, as your advisors, your advising team with your, uh, your chapter advisors and your chapter officers have a chance to call and set up an appointment with your college administrator. Say, hey, what can we do to help you with the campus? What would you like Phi Theta Kappa to do? Leaders, there are hard workers. It's a good idea to talk about maybe have a, a planning session on things that you could do on your campus and ways to talk to your campus administrators. Hey, Prez, how you doing is maybe not the best way to impress your college president. You know, uh, wearing your bite me t-shirt to the meeting is probably not the thing you want to do. Some of that just initial uh, etiquette of meeting with administrators. But then you really start talking to it. Your administration may say, now, enrollment's down a little bit because of all this COVID. We'd like you guys to help us improve our campus enrollment. Maybe go out and visit it, visit on your previous high school campuses and talk about the community college environment we have here. It might be that they need to work on some areas of interest on campus. The campus may need uh, some recycling done. You may have a litter problem on your campus. They need to do some mentoring to get freshmen involved and engaged on campus and make them feel comfortable with the campus environment. They need tutors on campus. If you get your administration visiting, they're going to come up with some ideas that I bet you can build on. And that's the big thing about the college project is collaboration with your campus administration. And you'll see that that's all part of your organization in your chapter. And when you step beyond your chapter, the regional level, your ability to get involved at the region. So planning here will get you ready for doing the college project. 
Uh, Deshauna Jernigan, who's our chapter president, is going to talk a little bit about the campaign for a regional officer. Notice in the last few years, not as many chapters are becoming involved in the campaign process. And I think that's because they're not sure if it's going to be very expensive or they don't know exactly what's involved. So Deshauna, can you share with us a little bit of your experiences? You were a big, a big part of our campaign team last spring where we did win the, the District 3 Vice Presidency of Texas. Deshauna, what can you say about that campaign? Um, what can I say about that campaign? I can say that that seeing other people and other chapters projects, seeing those seeing like people's minds come together to to form like projects that allow students to basically think outside the box to help our community and help our campus. That was just, it's just an eye off opener because you use the four you use the hallmarks and to create these projects. And and often often cases, if you want to create a unique project for um for your chapter, it can be pretty difficult. And I saw like while I, while I was while I was campaigning and while I was looking at other chapters projects, you can see to where it can be difficult to attach those hallmarks into your um, projects to your HIA projects and your college projects so that was like a really eye-opener to seeing like how can I help my community how can I help my um my my campus with a project that can portray all of these hallmarks that we that we have to hold our standards up to all right so we part of the campaign of course is the chapter shares with the other chapters in the region what we've been doing in terms of college project and honors in action. And they do that by way of a campaign skit. Now the skit's three minutes. and It doesn't take a lot of, of uh, money to do the skit because of course it's all entirely up to your membership and what happened. Deshauna, can you share a little bit about, uh, I believe it was the masked Phi Theta Kappa that visited the Texas leadership, I mean the Texas Regional Convention last year from our chapter. Yes, ma'am. So part of that skit, it was it was really interesting. It was pretty fun to um, it was pretty fun to rehearse. It was pretty fun to perform. And so what what um our chapter were trying to portray was like no matter where you come from, no matter who you are, you can be a part of Phi Theta Kappa and you can succeed in Phi Theta Kappa. So of course we had we had several members of our team um go up play a uh, theme to their um to whatever mask they had on and they say this is why I'm a part of Phi Theta Kappa. This is who I am and this is how I can succeed through this chapter and beyond. And it was a pretty pretty amazing skit. All right. Now this is where people go, oh we don't have time. We we haven't had had days to prepare this. Um Exactly when did we practice this skit? We practiced it the night before, like when we got there, we talked about it, but for the most part, we practiced it basically the night before the morning of, and it was on point. Like we had it in shape and ready to go. So, I mean, it, it, I can't, you can't just say it doesn't take, you don't have enough time, but you'll find time to make it happen. One of the things we found is it's hard to get your entire chapter together. We're a pretty big chapter. And it's hard to get the whole chapter together to practice until we get to a conference and get everybody gathered up on the bus or wherever we're going to be. So it's not like you have to, uh, you do need to think about what you want to share about your chapter and you want to make it fun and engaging for the people watching. But this is certainly no reason to say, oh, we can't, we can't come up with a skit so we can't be a regional officer. The region is always very supportive. And the best part about it is that the region, the Texas region is known for being, for wanting to let chapters really grow. So if you have a chapter that's never served as a chapter officer, as a regional officer before, that's something to share. I know we had some folks that came in from Temple. We call them the, the veggie people because they uh, had a, a big campus garden. But they really had, they just stormed onto the regional scene and have done a really great job. 
And other thing is that some people think they need to be a natural born leader to serve as a regional officer. So we have our regional officer, Amy Joffrey on with us. Amy, are you learning more as an officer? Uh, share a little bit about that. I've definitely learned a lot more about what I can do as a leader since I've been a regional officer and just how to stay organized and how to manage myself to be able to do what I need to do as a leader and as a student and as you know all the other hats I wear. Certainly a place that you can grow. So what I tell people don't know, I noticed in the chat that uh, our regional coordinator, Mary Linder, has dropped in some information that goes along with this. There's the honors program guide, and so I've got to be taking a peek at that. So when you think about this, it's an opportunity for leadership. Someone has to be willing to serve. It doesn't mean that you have to be a dyed in the wool, stamped on your forehead, I am Texas leadership material to be in this position. This is a great place for you to really learn it. Serve. In fact, I want to take a guess here, Amy, if last, uh, last fall, if I had said, Amy, you're going to be the District 2 Regional Vice President, you would have said? I probably would have crawled under the table and said no. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where it's a learn at. I see one of my new officers laughing over here because that's exactly it. Phi Theta Kappa is a place for you to spread your wings and it's in the most uh, comforting and surrounding environments you can have. So don't be afraid to give your chapters the opportunity to do that leadership experience running for a regional office. Seriously, I would love to see 20 chapters. Uh, Professor Linder may be fainting somewhere, but I would love to see 20 chapters running for regional offices this spring. I think it would be amazing. And I'll mention, of course, that it is part of, I hope this is that that is part of the three-star level. You can, somebody thumbs up, is this thing showing what it's supposed to show? Yes. Okay, so you can campaign for regional office. It doesn't say you have to win, you just have to campaign. You will learn so much just in the campaign process. And that really, to me, always cements our chapter leadership for the next year, because people really just fall in love with Phi Theta Kappa. And those are the folks that come back and go, I want to be a chapter leader. I want to do this. I want to be part of the, you know, I really want to be part of the chapter leadership. The office, you can assume a leadership role at a regional meeting. You can participate in a regional project or electronic communication. If your chapter is here today, guess what you're doing? Or collaborate with two other chapters for an activity or event. So the idea, all of this can be done virtually or in person this year. So it's really opened it up more even than it has in the past. I don't think we, I think some things are gonna to continue to stay virtual like these training meetings. So much easier for us to get together from all over the state of Texas so that we can share information between the chapters. So four star level, remember I talked about, talk to your administration about what they'd like to see you doing as Phi Theta Kappa leaders on campus. Four star level, implement it. Do whatever they said you were gonna do. I hear people cringing already, my favorite thing, if they tell you, most campuses now are no, non-smoking, but at one point in time, there was a terrible grumble because some of the presidents would say, we've got to get this litter pop problem under control. And so Phi Theta Kappa's college project was about picking up cigarette butts. And the whole idea of the college project, whatever your administration needs, quit. not only do you do it, but you be the best cigarette butt pickers that you will find <laughs> on the planet. So you take whatever they want you to do and you do it better. You make Phi Theta Kappa look good and you take care of problems that they have identified on campus. Keep them in the loop each month. You don't stand outside their office and try to bug them all the time, but you keep them in the loop. You invite them to events that you're doing that have to do with the college project and you let them know, hey, we picked up 47 pounds of cigarette butts or we've talked to 17 high schools, or we're having a meeting to talk about uh, mental health during this time of COVID on our campus. Whatever it is your, your college administrators want, you provide it and you do a bang up job of doing it. Then when it comes time for you to need money to maybe get to go to Baltimore next spring, 
then you know who your college administrators are and you can say, hey, President so-and-so, we really worked hard. We're up for a number of awards and we're trying to get members of our chapter to the international convention. Is there anything you can do to help? Well, now not only does the president know who you are, but he knows, or he or she knows what you've been doing for the campus. And that's going to probably improve not only communication between your administration, I think, and Kappa, but support. Support means funds to be able to do things you want to do. So that's a super important thing. So the idea is do the college project, and then part of what we call the hallmark reporting, write up what you did. And there's a, a set way of accomplishing that. Enter one category in your regional awards. The neat thing about the Phi Theta Kappa program, if you enter inter certain international awards, that also enters you at the region. So it's a double dip. Have you ever written an English paper? And the last thing you did was you hit a button and then you leave the whole thing. <sighs> but when you rewrite it, and you know you're going to rewrite it because we're Phi Theta Kappa and so we're going to do things. Always better. So when you take a look after the project, it's the write-ups are a reflection time. You look at what you did, how you did it, how did it work, who did it help or impact, and what can you do better next year. By doing that write-up, that's what you send in for the Hallmark reporting. That also helps your chapter to see, looking forward, what you can do for the future. So when you're looking at this four-star level, that's the college project and entering the college project. Everybody can do something on their campuses to help out their administration, write the report, and send it in. Everybody can be a four-star chapter. Now, you think you're going to win the first time? How'd you do the first time you tried to ride a bike or roller skate? Maybe that wasn't your most shining moment. I know I barely could walk. I trip over air. So the idea is if you do the project one year and you really reflect and think about what you're doing, the next year you've done it before, you have some good ideas how to do it better, and it's going to be better, and it's going to be better. In some years, it's you do a great job on your campus, but you don't write it up so well. Some years you do a great job on campus, you write it up really well, and at the International Convention, you're going to see your chapter name up there on that great big huge screen, and that is a super huge, exciting thing. Not because we, we don't do it because we're going to win awards, but we're Phi Theta Kappans. If you're going to do it to help other people, great. Why don't we go ahead and win an award while we're at it? Kind of a nice thing. So, four-star level, five-star. Develop an honors and action project. That's the honors and action program guide that uh, our regional coordinator has linked into the chat. Read over that and follow. There's actually a workbook online that can tell you how to set up an honors and action project, a way to do some research on things that need to be done or things that need to be changed in your area. And then there's a, a whole process of how you work through to do that honors and action project. Develop it, do it. Doesn't say it has to be perfect. Just says submit three entries to the Hallmark Awards program. Action, college project, and I know you've got an officer that's done a really good job for you this year. There's a great opportunity to recognize officers, individual members, officer teams, or even advisor teams, and recognize their impact on your chapter. Any of those count for that third award. And finally, you have to get involved at the international. Somebody in your chapter may have attended Catalyst last year. It was online. If so, check mark on step three. Chapter officers need to do EDGE. I'm about to bounce over and talk about EDGE. And you've got in one of those areas, one you need the leadership development course. So this is where people frequently are very concerned about the idea of being five-star. Oh, it's just too difficult. We can't do it. And most importantly, it's September. We don't have time to do it. Yes, you do. Several years ago, two things that are fun to share. One, we used to mail these things in. And as a new advisor, I was certain that we were the only chapter on the planet where I told one of my officers, go lay in front of the UPS truck and do not let them pull out until we get this packet up there. So I would send a kid up to the Yes, to literally physically restrain the truck while the next group was trying to zoom up there to get this stuff made. 
Um, one year, I literally had five advisors from areas around East Texas that were standing to upload, to put this stuff in the mail. And I said, hmm, maybe we're not the only one that has to get all this stuff done at the end. Then I spoke with several years ago at an international convention. I talked to a gentleman who was an advisor from the number one chapter in the nation. He said, and I quote, you know, this year we really didn't get our act together until like the end of September or October. Like, really? You got first place. How'd you do that? And he said, well, when we figured it out, we did a good job with it. So we are September. You have all, well, half of September. October, November, and December to get this done. You have time to be a five-star chapter. So that's probably the most important thing we could share at this point about the idea of a calendar. So take the things you need to do, take your available meetings, and start planning. We're going to go talk to our administrators. We're going to have a service day that we're going to work on stuff. We're going to meet and do some research on honors and action. And you put those in during your meeting times, and by the way, mix in a little bit of fun and you've got a chapter induction and it's gonna be December before you know it. Put it on a calendar though, or you, so you make sure you have that checklist of stuff you wanna do. Think of your chapter calendar and the five-star plan as the syllabus for your experience in Phi Theta Kappa. I'm gonna go back to Mary Ellen and let her pull up our information because one of the other ways that you guys can get a lot of additional training officers and advisors is with the five star the PTK Connect and the competitive edge and the edge programs as we call them. So Mary Ellen do you want to say a few words about Connect and then I'm going to turn the time over to Amy to share some stuff about Connect. I will let's see I was trying to flip the screen but um, I'll just leave it okay hang on just a second let me just flip the screen real quick. Okay so with PTK Connect um, basically, it's an opportunity for um, members. It's kind of a sh all in one shop. So, um, it's for members who are designated to transfer, um, what they can do is they gather information about the colleges and knowledge and um, find the best fit of a college transfer for their choice of uh, what they're interested in. And also to um, get discovered. That means demonstrate interest in the four year institutions and viewing and um, find the favorite um, college profiles that they're interested in and expect to hear from the recruiters who actually are looking for, definitely they're looking for Phi Theta Kappa students to enroll as members. Um, and then also search for scholar dollars. So what that means is definitely leverage your membership and secure and return on that investment. Find colleges offering um, those scholarships that are exclusive to Phi Theta Kappa transfer students. Uh, career insights, explore different career paths, including salary, uh, salary averages, um, and also employment stats in each state. Um, investigate the different academic uh, majors that align with your career interests or choices. And then last but not least, everything to gain and nothing to lose. Maximize your membership with the benefits and Phi Theta Kappa experience by taking full advantage of, um, of PTK Connect. It's free, it's online, and it, it's accessible 24 seven. So an excellent opportunity. Where the and then maybe on PTK with Alpha Omicron. So like PTK Connect, uh, the EDGE programs are also free and they're a great tool to um, better yourself and build your skills depending on where in your journey you are. Um, they're self-paced programs that include videos, they're very interactive and they have a lot of information packed in there. And uh, Competitive EDGE is really the foundation that you need to get started it teaches you how to communicate effectively. It goes into critical thinking. Some of it you may find that you already know, but then there's things that you're not going to be as familiar with. Uh, one example for me was imposter syndrome. I had heard of it, but I didn't really know exactly what it meant. And that's one of the things that the new competitive edge goes into. And thankfully, 
a competitive edge really helps you set yourself apart in that it teaches you all the things you need to know to do all the other cool stuff. Research edge is probably what I would say is the next step. It teaches you pretty much everything you need to know about the research process and it goes into a lot of detail a step-by-step -step thing on how to do things from citing an academic source to conducting interviews that you might use in your research essays. And while this is mainly about honors in action and applies to PTK in that way, I also just got done with an undergraduate fellowship over the week, over the uh, summer. And I found that the process there was very, very similar to research edge and honors in action. There were a lot of things that were very, very similar. So I was happy to have that background because it was eight weeks and you pretty much started and it didn't stop. <laughs> so I was glad to have a background before I got started and know what I was doing before I got to the point where I needed to know. And then transfer edge, um, if you haven't heard, the transferring process can be very tricky. Um, it can be complicated and often people get there and then they have problems and then they have doubts and then you end up not where you want to be. But Transfer Edge really walks you through the process and tries to show you step by step where you need to be, what you need to be doing. Employment Edge is for when you're ready to go into the workforce and it teaches you all those things that you wish high school would teach you. Uh, how, how to make a resume, how to nail the interview, how to even negotiate your salary. And those are some things that a lot of adults are not comfortable doing. So the EDGE programs are really great, they're free, and they set you up for success. I am proud to say that out of all of the university researchers, our two Phi Theta captains from the community college aced the abstract on the first try and all the university kids had to go back and try again. And both of them had worked on honors and action college project and they knew exactly how to do an abstract. So going to the next screen, Mary Ellen, is this you or me? You. All right. But I can good. jump in if you want to. <laughs> this is the uh, honors in action program guide you see there to the seventh generation. We've talked a little bit about it. The idea is it gives you a chance research to really make a difference in your communities. The college project, again, the major focus is collaboration and support with your college administration. We'll move forward because I know we're going short on time here. So now, again, we talk about the Hallmark process. The Hallmarks are, the Hallmark Awards are a way of recognizing the hard work done by your chapter, both individual college presidents or administrators, advisors, chapter officers, chapter presidents. This is the gravy. This is, you know, the thing is at this point, the chapter has worked hard and they are, they are so proud of the work they've done. And this is kind of just icing on the cake. The learning and what you, the, the collaboration with your administration and what you've learned, that makes all the difference in the world. But it does so happen that sometimes it all comes together. This was a academic, emotional, and physical wellness expo. Our college project last year was trying to bring uh, mental health and mental uh, recognition awareness to our campus. And uh, we happened to have a good college project and a good honors and action project and we ended up ranked number seventh in the nation. And we watched that on TV, but uh, next year, uh, just all the more incentive to be on the stage, hopefully, and you know, like I always tell people, everything you get, you get from the projects and the learning and what we've done. If you get on the stage, if you're recognized, if your chapter is recognized in any way at the regional convention or at the international convention, that is so amazing because there are you know, almost 1,400 chapters in the nation, and some of those chapters never do the work to be able to receive that recognition chapters recognize that is huge. Mary Ellen, you guys were on the stage last year for a couple of things. What did that, what was that all about? We were, we were so excited. So uh, we ended up uh, winning an award. Uh, first of all, in uh, uh, Texas region, we won a uh, Texas top chapter 
And then on the international level, we ended up um, getting an award for our uh, college project and also recognition in the honors and action project and uh, finished in the top 100 in the nation. So for us, that's so exciting. As you can see, we have a small chapter. So that's the neat thing is that whether your chapter is huge or you only have a few active uh, officers or members, um, everyone has the same opportunity. And again, it's about the difference that you're making in your community or how you did that research in your honors in action, and then also how well it's written as far as your, your final project. But um, for us, it was a thrill because um, you, know, you kind of never know. You just work hard and you learn a lot from your different projects. But to be on stage and you hear that your name called, it was so thrilling. And even last year on the virtual environment, that was exciting as well. So it's, um, we learned a lot, but it's, it's exciting. But I think that's the important thing too, is just for everyone to realize it doesn't matter if your chapter's small, you still have that opportunity to have a successful chapter. And then, okay, and then moving on. So just, um, just wanted to let you know that um, Phi Theta Kappa, we have local, regional, and international levels. And so on the local, that would be your chapter advisors, officers, members, and alum. And that is um, your chapter um, on your campus. And then on the regional level, of course, we're Texas region. So we have a regional coordinator, the regional officers, regional advisory board, and our assistant or regional coordinator and then um, districts within the region. And then the international levels that were the headquarters and staff and then international officers and board of directors. And then for contact information, we just listed on here, we have Phi Theta Kappa headquarters. And of course the Texas key rep who is uh, Christopher Bingham. And then Texas region, we are very fortunate to have Mary Linder and Dr. Jessica Hargis and uh, soon to be Dr. Mary Linder too. So, um, but we are so excited to have them and they really lead our region and provide the information and guidance that we need. And then um, giving the presentation today from Alpha Omicron, uh, Gigi Delk, and then our D3 Vice President, Amy Jeffron, and then uh, myself. And, um, and we appreciate our chapter members helping today too. And we just wanted to see before we close if we have any questions. Okay, so I think most importantly, and then I'll let uh, Gigi close this out, but I think most importantly is whether you have a large chapter or you have a small chapter, we want you to get the most out of Phi Theta Kappa. Again, you grow as leaders and we grow as individuals. And also we make those connections. For example, Gigi and I met um, when I started 15 years ago. And Gigi, you've been an advisor for how long? Oh, uh, 30 something. It's amazing. Five years, I don't remember. <laughs> and she's just an has been an incredible mentor, but also more importantly, a friend. And the same with officers and and uh, members, you'll get to meet uh, and make lifelong friends that you'll have forever. We all hope that you have a wonderful year, and most importantly, to have fun and enjoy the process. Absolutely, I always tell my students, Phi Theta Kappa could change your life. I had to laugh on my, fi of course, I'm a Facebook person. I haven't quite mastered Instagram, but on my Facebook time hop, there was a picture of a couple that were celebrating the birth of their, of their son. And they mentioned that they met in a Phi Theta Kappa meeting doing, doing a drumbeat, our campus for homecoming, and had no idea that, that was, they were going to be future husband and wife. I, I have to tell you, Phi Theta Kappa will change your life. Some of my dearest, dearest friends are part of Phi Theta Kappa, and many of our students I have found that they are very, very close friends with people that they never would have met or even spoken to had they not become involved through Phi Theta Kappa. So that's, and you know, I will have to close with this. Texas, the region is behind you. Everything from the uh, District 1, which is way out there in West Texas, El Paso and, and, and way on the western side, uh, up here in District 2, District 2 which is Dallas, District 3, which is Texarkana through Tyler to Waco. We hope a few folks are with us. District 4 is Houston and that area. District 5 is coming down into the valley. Everybody in all five of those districts is rooting for you. When Texas, anybody in Texas 
receives recognition, you'll see everybody in Texas stand. Ah, it didn't make sense. But anyway, the idea is that we are, when it comes to it, we are working hopefully to make you guys super awesome chapter. I hope to see every one of you being recognized in some way. And the most important thing is I want you to get out of it all the stuff that Phi Theta Kappa can do. Really, really can change your life. I think we are, we have five minutes left. I will mention, I'm looking at some pictures, at least three people, four people I'm looking at. One got a full ride to TCU, Amaya Blanton, who you might see, by the way, on some of the Phi Theta Kappa activities. Uh, Ana E. Hernandez uh, received a ton. We are, look at that, we are the best reader. Uh, well, we've got, I'm looking at a number of people that have received scholarships and recognition. But again, you know, sometimes I think a lot of people would trade. The recognition is not as important as the friends that you're standing beside in those pictures. The pictures absolutely make you smile because you're going, oh, I remember them and I know where they are and they've transferred here and they're leaving there. And it's just kind of amazing. You guys are part of the Texas region. Uh, we know we have a few other regions too for these webinars. So uh, you guys, we, we will definitely applaud and uh, support you guys as well. We always used to say, what well, was it? Hug a Texas, squeeze a Floridian. So you'll see that our, our efforts are to, to help everyone become their best in Phi Theta Kappa. You guys have an absolutely amazing semester. Run for regional office. Okay, I don't okay, I think we're out then. So have a great year. Bye-bye everybody.